Sylvester Stallone returns to the screen as John Rambo in Rambo 3. Shot across three continents with a crew of 300 and a cast of thousands, Rambo 3 stands as one of the largest scale productions of the year. What will set Rambo 3 apart from the other two Rambos is it's much bigger and we're trying to make this as realistic as possible so to do this has been a difficult affair. The story of John Rambo began six years ago with First Blood. Stallone starred as the Vietnam veteran who turned to his mentor, Colonel Troutman, when he had trouble with a world that wouldn't accept him. They drew first blood, not me. Let me come in and get you the hell out of there. They drew first blood. The relationship between Rambo and Troutman, played by Richard Crenna, was strengthened in Rambo First Blood Part Two as they joined forces in the blockbuster action film. Do we get the win this time? This time it's up to you. Now in Rambo 3, John Rambo and Sam Troutman are faced with their greatest challenge, assisting Afghan freedom fighters in their conflict with Soviet forces. We want to investigate the problem. They've asked me to go in, and I want you to go with me, John. My war is over. Rambo! What happened? Something went wrong. Troutman and the rest of his party have been captured. What about me? Can you get me in? Action! Colonel Troutman is taken hostage in Afghanistan, and it's interesting because no other reason on Earth could get Rambo to move, to go after the one person who listened to him more than anyone else. Why must we do this? Because you do it for me. To recreate the war-torn battlefields of Afghanistan, director Peter McDonald and his crew traveled to Israel for three months of intense location shooting at the Dead Sea. We decided to shoot Rambo in the Mideast simply because it added a sense of realism, of weight to the film. I think shooting Rambo in Las Vegas would, 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 would lack a certain weightiness. You go, oh yeah, it's shot live across the street from a casino. It doesn't, uh, doesn't quite ring true. This is um, a story really about Afghanistan, so I wanted to get as close to the natural environment as I could. The desire for realism led to an attention to detail in many areas. Technical advisors were consulted to ensure that the film's portrayal of Afghanistan was authentic. My help has been in many different areas. In fact, technically, I advised them for different scene of the movie, making sure that it looked very real and the way it is in Afghanistan. Production designers traveled to the Afghan border to purchase authentic costumes and props for the film. For me, looking on these things and looking at the people, you feel like you're in one of the market in Afghanistan. Okay, so we're gonna start with them all up here then. Careful preparation was also involved in the stunt sequences. Just about to crush me. I roll out of the way. With action in every scene, Peter McDonald brought in veteran stunt coordinator Vic Armstrong to oversee the detailed planning. And on this particular film, you've got the whole variation of stunts that you normally do on five different pictures. You do them all on one picture. We have horse work, we have aerial work with helicopters, we have a lot of explosions, which is all very dangerous. As much action as we've had in the other films, this, uh, this film has even more action. It's broader in scope, and now it becomes uh, a much broader canvas. This is almost Rambo of Arabia, you know? <laughs> it's, a, it's a very big film. The crew planned for many weeks for the complex stunts involved in the film's climactic battle. Thousands of stuntmen, horses, tanks, and helicopters played a part in bringing the final conflict to life. Let's go this way. Let's have a few uh, tanks going over when some horses come down. Horses and tanks standing by. Helicopters standing by. 
Apex are set. We are ready to go. I'd like the people to walk out of this film being entertained. And if you can make a statement and also entertain, that's the most important thing for me. The story of John Rambo began six years ago with First Blood. Sylvester Stallone starred as the Vietnam veteran who turned to his mentor, Colonel Troutman, when he had trouble with a world that wouldn't accept him. They drew first blood, not me. Let me come in and get you the hell out of there. They drew first blood. The relationship between Rambo and Trout, played by Richard Crenna, was strengthened in Rambo First Blood Part 2 as they joined forces in a blockbuster action film. Do we get the win this time? Yeah. Right, stand by to shoot. Now, in Rambo 3, the two men take on a new assignment. And here we go now! Man. While in Afghanistan delivering supplies, Troutman is captured. Roll the camera! Mark. Rambo must rescue his comrade, and the two face a test of their ultimate strength, their friendship. Action! 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 Colonel Troutman is taken hostage in Afghanistan, and it's interesting because no other reason on earth could get Rambo to move, to go after the one person who listened to him more than anyone else. Why must you do this? Because you do it for me. For David Morrell, author of First Blood, Troutman represents the family that Rambo never had. <laughs> the key to their relationship, I think, is that Colonel Troutman is, in a sense, uh, uh, a kind of surrogate father figure for Rambo. If Troutman were out of these pictures, that there would be something so critically missing that Rambo by himself is somehow incomplete. I think it's Troutman who, who represents the humanity that, that Rambo is looking for. This mission's important, John. Do you really think we're going to make a difference? If I didn't, I wouldn't be going. They're also comrades. They're soldiers together, and they've lived and, and fought and seen death together. And I think there's a very strong bond between the two of them. The bond of friendship between Rambo and Troutman gives each of them a unique strength. It is this friendship that is tested and survives in Rambo 3. It's good timing. What are friends for? Hi there movie lovers, did you know that while Sylvester Stallone was trying to break into the film industry, he even had to sell his beloved Doc Butkus for $40 so he could afford to eat? Don't worry though, he got him back and even put him in the first Rocky film. Make sure to click below to subscribe on the side for more great content and you can get my t-shirt at the link in the description.